Hello, this is Dr. Matthew W.I. Dunn. I'm making this video mainly for my family and friends, but other people might get benefit from it. I'm uh, making this video from Papua New Guinea, the independent state of Papua New Guinea, and I am living and teaching here at Catholic Theological Institute, which is in, well, it's called in the town Bomana, but there's really not much of a town uh, of Bomana, you know what I'm saying? Um, so we're really kind of in the National Capital District, which is Port Moresby. Nevertheless, let me get to uh, showing you some things, and I'm going to uh, turn this around or change the settings and uh, put this in my pocket and walk around and talk. So give me a moment here. Let's uh, uh, see what I can do here. So, all right. Okay, then. So... I'll walk around my room, give you a, a sense of what my room looks like. Let me go into the corner here. Oh, first things first, let me show you my beautiful, beautiful air conditioner, which I had to complain a lot. Of, <laughs> I had to do a lot of complaining to really get them to install this, but this is just necessary if you're going to live in Papua New Guinea because it's just too hot here all the time. Uh, you can see that it's in Celsius and not in uh, the Imperial system which I don't care, as long as it does what I need it to do. I go into the corner and give you a kind of a panoramic view of my room. There's my bed. There's the cross of my Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, the bed, my chair, where I have my CPAP machine, but that's covered. Here's a back door to the, the back of the building I'm in. Let me just unlock that and show you. This is the back of the building. And you see that uh, here is a nice porch, okay, and you see we have trees back here. Um, you'll also notice that it's enclosed, and I'll mention more about that <laughs> later. But right now, let's go back in. This is my bathroom. You know, pretty nice bathroom. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the shower kind of clogs up um, on demand. But, you know, for the most part, it's, you know, a very nice shower. Um, you know, the sink, I have hot water and cold water. The, you have to be careful on PNG because the hot water gets extremely hot. I mean, scaldingly hot. There's the, the toilet. I still have not figured out what these two buttons do. I know that they're supposed to flush the toilet, but they don't really do much of a job. Um, there's my closet. Who wants to see in there? It's not interesting. Um, here is my mess. It's three months I've been here. And I still really haven't cleaned up my mess. There's a little bit of organization. You know, some of the books I brought with me. My pharmacy. My pharmacy. Well, you really need mosquito, repe mosquito repellent. The not knots The mosquito in Papua New Guinea. That you need. You do need a lot of alcohol. That's, I find that alcohol actually works pretty good on the mosquito bites. Um, it's a little painful, but it, but it seems to kill the germs and kill something. I don't know why. I, I have calamine lotion, but actually the alcohol has worked better. Got some cortisone healing cream. Oh, this is very important. If you do come to Papua New Guinea or to a malaria-prone area, which it, I didn't intend for that to rhyme, but the rhymes just flow from me, people, um, then you should get this. And I'll put in a little plug here for Swanson Premium Brand Full Spectrum Papaya Leaf. Okay? These pills, you want them. I have them right here with my coffee. I take them every day, one a day. Hold on, just opening it up to show you. Okay? And you take it. And actually, I did, in fact, go online and, and find a medical study in a peer-reviewed medical journal which um, did say that it was effective. Taking papaya leaf um, in powdered form was actually effective in staving off malaria. So I've been here three months, and I've been bitten all up the wazoo by mosquitoes, and I still haven't gotten malaria, so there must be something to it. I mean, I have gotten sick. I've gotten colds, but no malaria. I'm showing you right now my Canon Pixma scanner and printer. You know, I, I bought this. If, if you are an academic, you need your own printer and scanner. Okay, there's my laptop computer that I brought from the United States. 
Um, if you come from the United States, you are going to have to get an adapter. So um, I had to go and buy this universal adapter here because the plugs are Australian. They're the three-pronged. I'm not going to unplug it right now and show you, but they're the three-pronged Australian-style plugs. You can go on the Internet and see what they look like. Um, you do get a lot of power surges on Papua New Guinea. The current is not reliable. It's not constant. So you have to be aware of that. It can make your machine go screwy. And there's my fan. Yeah, they tried to get off. <laughs> they tried to palm a fan off on me when I got here. Like, you know, oh, but you'll have a nice fan. And so, no, Maddie needs air conditioning. <laughs> I'm just like, no way. I need some air conditioning. There's my laundry. Okay, and let's go outside. Go out my door. Unlock my door. As you can see, these are the types of windows you have for letting... Well, really, it's supposed to let the breeze in, but there isn't always a nice breeze, and... You cannot feel this, but maybe you can see it, but um, some up here, for example, you can see the condensation on my windows from the air conditioner. You can also sometimes see it on the lock, but not or on the handle, but not today. But sometimes I'll show up and there will be water all over the door handle because it's very cool in my room here because of the air conditioner. But as soon as we come out here, it is very hot. It is easily in the upper 80s, um, maybe the low 90s, and the humidity right now is probably about 70 to 80 percent. It, it is quite warm. Um, you'll see again we have a porch here in my room. I am the only one who is on the ground floor. Um, you will notice that the enclosure is a cage, literally a cage, and there's a reason for that because people will pick you clean. They will steal and take your stuff if you leave your door. Even if your door is locked, they can still get in. So, hello, Mr. Pita. I'm just taking video for my family. So you constantly have to come in and lock and unlock the doors. Down this hallway is the uh, laundry room where I did some laundry earlier. Let's go, go in here. Very nice, nice, efficient washing machine. There's my laundry. I'll put that out later. I'm not going to do it now. But if I did want to do it, I would take my clothes and I would come out here and we have, you know, metal wires and whatnot. And you can string your laundry up or put your laundry up here. Okay, I'm just going to go down the back here on the porch. Again, notice the cage. Um, a lot of these other rooms, the doors are locked. The doors are locked, so I can't get in to show you them. But they're pretty much the same as my room. There's another room. Is this open? Nope. Nope. Here is the kitchen. I usually leave the doors open for the kitchen just to get a breeze in. Um, you know, so I, I don't see much of a reason to keep the doors closed. It's just me. Here is our microwave, which is broken. As you can see, you push that in and it stays. And sometimes, like now, you can't close the door. So I have to mess with that and then it will close. The microwave also has an issue with sometimes blowing out the circuit breakers. So you have to run down to that middle hallway I was showing you and flip the switch back on. Here is a toaster. Nice, cheap little toaster. Yova, never heard of it. Um, made in China, as most things are here in PNG. The Chinese are everywhere in this part of the world. The United States has kind of um, acquiesced in its position here. Um, so this is a nice little toaster I got. It works very well. Um, because there was no toaster, and, you know, basically I had to use the gas stove to toast. Nice little uh, um, carafe, um, what you might call it, a, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a uh, kettle for boiling water. A little fridge here, in which I have some bread, I have some cheese, I have some jam and some sugar, and, of course, water. You do want to drink a lot of water, milk. 
Milk is a precious commodity here. They only have one dairy farm in Papua New Guinea, and I do buy the milk. It's called Ilimo when I can because I want to support the local economy. And I do it also like this, in ways like this. Highlands honey, this is Papua New Guinean made honey. It's excellent. Um, for stuff like um, peanut butter, if you like peanut butter, you want to get the stuff that's made by sanitarium. Um, believe it or not, this is made by a religious group. The Seventh-day Adventists own this company, and it's from Australia, but it's really good. And if you want peanut butter and jelly or jam, you really should only buy stuff that comes from either Australia or from, from uh, New Zealand because the stuff from Thailand, the stuff from India, the stuff from Pakistan sucks. <laughs> it's not good, doesn't taste good. Um, here's some coffee. The PNG coffee here, this is, in, this is what the PNG coffee, yeah, hold on, let me, uh, let me open this for you and show you. <clears throat> See, that's another issue. It is so humid here that when you try to take lids off of, you know, of bottles and stuff like that, it can sometimes be somewhat difficult because you might put the lid on back very lightly, but because of the humidity, as you can see, it'll make it all sticky and it'll stick, you know. Anyways, their coffee is very fine and it's very strong, but it's not strong like cappuccino strong or espresso strong, It's but it's got a really good flavor. I really like it. And uh, the company Nescafe, coffee company Nescafe actually use it has a PNG Papua New Guinea version that they sell here it's really good here is our gas stove which thanks be to God does work you just have to turn the gas on and here is our sink and variety of things stuff like that there's our garbage and bottles um, you may think, oh, good, they're putting all the bottles and the cans together for recycling. No. <laughs> there is no recycling in PNG. In fact, there's no garbage pickup, even, even in Port Moresby, the city. Um, if you want to take care of your garbage, I'll show you what you do. Let's see here. Hello, Mr. Cordu. Hello. How's our maintenance man? Uh, maybe you can see just beyond that tree. Let's see. Well, it's a little bit, it's very blurry, so you can't see it very well. So let me pull back here. But just beyond this tree here, you can't really see it with the sunlight. But anyways, it's actually, you'll have to take my word for it that it's there. There is a, um, uh, like a kiln or something. I don't know how to describe it. Almost like a barbecue place. And you uh, take your garbage there and, and you burn it. You know, so, uh, yeah, you burn it. You have to burn your own garbage. And they burn everything. Plastic, plastic, metal, um, uh, glass, paper, of course, cardboard. I'm still not exactly what to do with my um, electronic stuff because I really I don't feel good about you know ink cartridges or a flash drive and just throwing that throwing that in there. I just don't like it, um, like doing it. So I'm kind of trying to hold on to those things. So that's the dining room. There are the gas tanks. Okay, and now here we go. I'm gonna go outside. Just gonna keep walking. And I'm gonna put the uh, put this in my pocket as I walk, so I don't have to keep holding on to it. All right, let's see how we do here. How are we doing? Can you see where I'm going? All right, open up the door here. Get my keys out. Keys, keys, keys. You need keys for everything. Keys for your key for your room. Key for the cage. Because if you don't lock stuff up, then stuff tends to disappear. Okay, so off we go. I'm just going to go walking onto the main road here. As you can see, Mr. Pita does a wonderful job of, you know, planting and mowing and 
keeping it very nice. If you're wondering what the weather is, as I said, it's, you know, the sun is out. It's not very, I don't know if you can see that, but it's not very cloudy. There is a nice breeze. However, it is so humid that it's just, and so hot that it's, the breeze really doesn't help very much. There's a statue of the glorious and holy Virgin Mary. And there's CTI. Oh, there's one of our ubiquitous dogs. Happy noon. Saying hello to some students from one of the local schools. Hey, Pooch. Hello, doggy. Do you want to say hi? Yeah. Yeah. The doggies are nice, you know? Some of the doggies are not nice. They're scared. Um, they're scared of humans because, sadly, in PNG, dogs are commonly seen as a pest. A dog is seen as a pest. And so people will throw stones at them and hit them to try to get them away. But the dogs are just starving. The dogs are hungry, you know. That's why they're hanging around. Not a lot of cats in PNG. There are some cats, but there are tons of dogs. Tons of dogs in PNG. Let's see if I'm getting a... Make sure I'm getting a nice... So my dog friend and I are walking here. Let's see, here are the classrooms. The classrooms are usually locked. But I teach up here in these two classrooms. This is the campus. It's a very nice campus. We're coming up on the classrooms. Over there, I don't know if you can see my hand, but that's where Mr. Wambi works. He is our printer. He does a lot of printing. He's helped me out a lot. Here is one of the classrooms. This is for the philosophy students. So I'm just gonna walk down here. This room here is the faculty room. So you come in here and wanna get some coffee. We've got a little kettle here. You got some milk, dried powdered milk. Um, why powdered milk? I don't know why. I don't know why we can't buy Ilamo or something else. Some coffee, PNG coffee, some sugar. Um, yeah, it's nice, you know, we're taking care of. Whoa, hello, friend. <laughs> you following me around, huh? You rascal. Okay, so let's go out. I'm walking again. Just walking around. Down there is the offices for the Dean of Studies, and here's the notice board, uh, notice boards and stuff like that. And we come out in the back here. This is the back of the classrooms, and the back of the classrooms, and all back here in this region are houses. There's a school, there's De La Salle School, um, for boys, and there's a girls' school over the other way. Um, you can see the mountain there, in, in the pretty mountain, in the in the um, in the on the horizon there. And there are, there are actually houses, and people do actually live back here. So, hello, sir. Just taking video for my family. Just walking around. Okay, so I mean the rest is just classes. I'm gonna go down to towards the library. Da 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 Hey Brandon. Father Zenon is gonna pick it up for me. Thank you. See you later. Okay, so I'm walking down to this second this other level I should say and to the library. Okay. And I work in the library on the evenings because I need money. So I get a few extra kina. Hello, sir. Come on in. Oh, Rebecca. And she's got the air conditioning on. Sorry, I'm just taking pictures from my family. So, so just saying that's Rebecca. Hello. Whoop. There's Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca. And then just wanted to show them the library. Hello, Mr. Morris. That's Mr. Morris. How are things going? 
Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. He he kind of found me and was following me around. Oh, it's a girl. Okay. So how's Tobias' head? It's fine. He has a scab. He doesn't seem to have a problem. Okay. So what are we going to do about the bathroom? Are we going to maybe put a, a lock or something on it? Like one of those lo- slide locks or something? And... <laughs> okay, I'll see you. I know you're busy. She's a busy woman. She is the head librarian, and Mr. Morris is the assistant librarian. Oh, there's Mr. Kundawani again. Hey, Father Tom. You stirring up any trouble? <laughs> There's the sign, Catholic Theological Institute. And now we'll go down the stairs. Da-da-da-da. Usually people sit over here and park. Sometimes they're people who are associated with CTI, and sometimes they are not. <laughs> which is one of the reasons that you have to keep an eye on your stuff. Because they'll just sit there, you know? They'll act like, you know, hey, I'm just hanging around, you know? They're not a student here, they don't live here, but they just hang around, you know? Like, hey, nothing's wrong, you know? But all the while, they're looking. And as soon as someone leaves something, you know, puts a bag down, puts a computer down, gone. And then they're gone. And they're quick. And I don't know where they go, but these people are quick. They're thieves. I mean, uh, there's no other way to describe it. They're thieves. I mean, they're not poor people who need money, you know, because I've seen poor people here in PNG, people who are starving and malnourished. No, these are guys that are just the rascals. They're, you know, they're looking to make a few extra bucks by stealing. So, so anyways, that's the... uh, what I'm walking by now. Those are the Salesians, I believe. Here's one of my brothers walking down. Making a video for my family. Okay. So that's the Salesian house down there. As I'm walking along. Actually, I'm going to take this out so you can see more clearly. And look how pretty it is. I mean, the road is pretty. Everything's pretty. And if you didn't have to worry about everything else, it actually would be a very nice place to live. But you have to worry about thievery, power cuts, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. You know, the roads are not very good. The road here, you might be able to see it, has just been, it's in the process of being repaved. Before I came here, apparently the road, this road was extremely bad, had a lot of potholes and... This is apparently the uh, second stage of paving. I don't know what the third stage is going to look like, because the second stage, to be honest with you, doesn't look very good, but whatever. And, you know, they show up when they want to show up. You know, they don't show up and pave it and get it done and then come back. Hello, sir. They don't come back, you know. They just come, they dump oil down, and then they put all these big stones on it, not even crushed stones. So it's kind of like you're walking on a pile of stones, you know, and, and because they're, have, they're all oily, they get on your shoes, and so, yeah, it's not very efficient. Um, and when they first came, when I was, when they first came and I was here, this is one of their trucks. You see this Salesians, this is one of their pieces of equipment. When I was first here, they were supposed to come at 6 a.m. in the morning. And they came at like 6 p.m. And, you know, the foreman showed up, the owner of the company, and he was pissed. He's like, what, you've been, you know, where have you been for the last 12 hours, you know? Oh, well, we're here now. And not only were they there, they're like, hey, we're here now, but, oh, by the way, they wanted to be paid overtime because they were going to have to work at night. So they play these little games, um... And so that's how stuff doesn't get done, or it gets done poorly, inefficiently. Okay, that's the house of the Divine Word Missionaries, called the SVDs, because from Latin, um, let's see if I can remember that, I know it's Divine Word Missionaries, but I think it's Servants of the Divine Word. So is it Servi, um, Divina, Divini Verbi or something? Anyways. I'd have to look it up. But anyways, they're called the SVDs in Latin, from their Latin uh, name. This 
group of buildings is for the Missionaries of the Sacred Heart, which was founded, I think, by the French. Uh, whew, man, it's hot. It is hot. And you always feel like you're being followed here. It's a weird feeling. But anyways, it's a weird feeling, but unfortunately it's all too common because you are being followed. Especially if they think you have something, like a cell phone, you know, that they can just grab off you. So, De Boimanu College, this is for the... Oh, here's my brother keeping in shape. You've got no fat on you. You're thin, and yet you're out here... I'm going to have to start jogging. De Boimanu College, MSCs. And before you ask... No, I have no reason, I have no explanation as to why the guy is wearing shades. <laughs> I have no idea why he's wearing sunglasses, but he is. And I guess he's the founder of the Missionaries of the Sacred Heart, and that's the road up to their place. Uh, there, sorry about that, there's Poochie taking a dump. Alrighty, let's keep on walking for this part of our excursion. We're coming up on, there's another dog, we are coming up on the Dominicans. You know, I'm going to try and get out of the sun here and stay in the shade, because it's just becoming quite unbearable. <sighs> okay, walking along here. Yes, you have to have a water system. You really need to have a generator because they cut the power. Sometimes they even do cut the water. That was a problem a few weeks ago. Um, there were people up in the mountains where the water is, was, is generated from for Port Moresby, and apparently the people, it's their customary land. We would call it tribal land in the United States, but they call it customary land. Um, and the people felt that they were not being paid r the proper rent. Hey, sir, they're being paid rent on time. So they just kind of turned off the water pumps and... You know, when you turned on your spigot in Port Moresby, you know, you got a little dribble of water until the government finally paid them. So that's one of the joys of living here. So here are the Dominicans. I'm just going to show you their building. I want to invade privacy. Hello, sir. This is their house. The Dominicans. Some of the houses are nicer than others. You can tell kind of which are the poorer um, religious orders, which ones have support and which don't. It seems to me that the Dominicans have some good support from their community. Um, the Vincentians seem to be very supportive of their priests here. Um, I do not know about the Franciscans. We have two groups of Franciscans here. We have the OFMs. And we have the OFM Capuchins. We do not have the original Franciscans called the Conventuals, unfortunately. Um, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but, you know, I do like the original order. And uh, they live up this road off to the side, so I'm not going to really walk out that way that far. But, you know, like the Dominicans give each one of their, their members a laptop... I don't know how much internet access they have. See, that's another issue, is internet access. It's, you know, you can get internet access. I'm just going to show you a view from the back. I mean, you can get internet access in PNG. Not always reliably, but you can get it. And since we're near Port Moresby, we can kind of get it reliably. But the powers that be, the administrative powers that be here at CTI, are not convinced that having internet, especially for academic study and work, for me, as well as the students, is as necessary as I think they, they should. So, basically, in PNG, you get a dongle. You're probably going to have to get a dongle. And since most of the country is not electrified, I think only 10% of the country has electricity, it's not going to be a question anyways. It's going to be a moot point, because you ain't getting power. <laughs> so you ain't getting no internet um, unless you have a generator, which people do have. 
here you can see kind of, you know, the issues with PNG. We do have a gate um, to keep cars out at night, which you kind of have to do. And graffiti is everywhere, you know? Um, I mean, if you think the United States is bad with graffiti, come to PNG. Just everything that can have graffiti on it um, will have graffiti on it. They love their graffiti. And it's not even good graffiti. It's not like beautiful pictures or colors. or It's just people want to scribble. Gangs want to scribble their names on something to show that they were there. You know, it's not even... Uh, it's not even... I, I wouldn't even call it artwork. It doesn't make the city look better. To me, it makes Port Moresby look more like a dump. It looks like New York City back in the 80s. You know, kind of a dump. Well, also kind of how New York City is looking right now under de Blasio. He's kind of letting it become a dump again. Okay. This is Marion Hill College, the Marion Hill Missionaries, CMMs. As far as uh, if I remember correctly, the Marion Hill Missionaries have no missionaries. They got no vocations. So pretty much the, the guys that are there, the priests or whatever, they allow people to stay the night. You pay them 10 kina for using power and water. And the students who, external students who, who live, teach, or teacher, who go to class here, especially night classes, really need some place to stay. There are no buses. Um, there's no one to take them home. And for the most part, people walk. People walk. Uh, you'll see things are not so different in PNG than in Jersey City. People walk. And to be very blunt, man or woman, especially woman, if you try to walk back home, you will probably get accosted. You will be violently accosted. It is not safe to walk on your own, especially if you're a woman. It's just not safe, so they let them stay here overnight, and then in the day they can go walking or take them in the car or something. You know. Again, you can see all the people announcing their presence with the graffiti. And here we are in the main road. I'm not going to walk down very far. I just want to show you what it looks like. Here's some more boys coming from school. A lot of people walking. And a lot of people have to walk because a lot of people do not have cars. So they have to walk. Uh, this road is pretty good, if you'll look at it. It's actually pretty good. It's as good as something you would find like in, in Sussex County in New Jersey, you know, if you're just walking around in the countryside. You know, dirt on the side, you know, nicely paved, you know. Uh, I would like to say that this is more typical than it is. There's a pile of trash over there that people just threw there. Um, I would like to say that it's more typical of than it is, but it really isn't. And unfortunately, this, the sad thing is, the context is that Port Moresby is the best paved place in the whole country because it's the capital. So they've got probably the best roads in the whole country, and that's as good as they can do. That's, that tells you something. Um, I want to see, show you, if I can, for the trees here. Just far off in the distance there, there's a beautiful small mountain. Just over the, the red top, the roof, you 